Hi you guys, it's Nova here. I keep getting messages from people on Instagram and Twitter and stuff asking for makeup tutorials. And I just want to say the reason why I haven't yet done a full on proper drag makeup tutorial is because, well, one, there are a plethora of makeup tutorials on YouTube by people much more talented than I am. And I just feel like you'd be much better off watching them. And Two, I just always feel like I'm constantly evolving and growing and putting a makeup tutorial out there is kind of like finals, you know what I mean? I might look back on it in a few months time and think, oh no, wait, I don't do it like that, do it like this. So I don't know, I can't, I can't commit to putting a tutorial out like that. I don't know, call me weird. But I thought I could compromise and so today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on my highlighting and contouring process. This is going to include foundation, highlighting and contouring and it is honestly, it's just the way that I do it myself. Um, hopefully it will help some of you guys who are new to doing makeup, new to doing drag, but obviously as you get more experience with makeup you're going to learn tips and tricks from other people that may suit you better. So I'm not interested in people giving me a whole long list of what I'm doing wrong in this video. Um, I just This is really just a beginner's tutorial and if you are advanced at makeup then there's going to be no point in you watching this video. Alright then, I hope you enjoy! So the first thing you need to do is apply a primer. Now I used to think that primers were a myth, I didn't think they worked at all, but actually after playing around with a few I do think they're worth having. Now the primer that I'm using in this video is Primed and Ready by Collection. It's very, very cheap. Throughout this video, I'm going to tell you the brands that I'm using, but by all means, substitute them, find what works well for you. I generally go for more of like the budget brands, but if you want to go and whack out a MAC primer, then you go for it. So really what I'm doing is just taking little drops of primer on my fingers and putting it all over my face. I'm just, I'm just putting drops pretty much all over my face. And then you're just going to use your fingers and really just blend it into the skin. Make sure everything is nice and covered and smooth. This will really help all of the makeup and especially the foundation grip onto your skin. Especially if you've got any areas like of dry skin, any dry patches like I tend to, um, the primer will help the makeup reduce your skin. The next thing I do is a little trick that I picked up from um, Willem and it's beard cover. I have really dark facial hair and even clean shaving both directions, it feels smooth as a baby's ass but I can very often still see a 5 o'clock shadow. So to do that, I'm using a orange lipstick. This is a Stargazer lipstick, and I'm just applying it almost like a concealer over my beard area. And what the orange tones do are counteract the cool blue tones of your beards, and that will really act as a good base of foundation afterwards. Not all of you will have to do this, but I always do this before applying anything else. I always cover up this beard cover with a concealer. This is um, a cover up stick by Collection and I'm just putting this really on top of the orange lipstick. It's also quite a good tip to just go over some of the little razor bumps you might have on your neck. Again, I'm very prone to those, so a little bit of concealer there just to calm them down. You will see in this video that whilst I actually apply my highlighting, contouring and foundation, I'm also covering up my brows. Um, I like to leave each layer to dry before I put more powder on. Um, click here if you want to see my brow tutorial, I go into more detail there. But don't worry about that in the background, um, I, I, I just do it to save time. Now for the highlighting, I use a wet highlight, it is a cream based foundation and I actually use Celebre HD Pro Cream Foundation by Mehron and I'm using Eurasia Ivory and first of all I will just put a little bit of um, this product with my fingers just under my eyes. I, I get these really horrible grey areas under my eyes, these bags, and that this just brightens it up. Um, less is more with this, it, it is very a wet product, so just take a little bit on the tip of your fingers and I'm just blending it under my eyes. After I have covered the bags under my eyes, I am taking my foundation. Now I use a pan stick by Max Factor. Uh, I'm using the shade Fair 25 and I like the pan stick by Max Factor because it's quite cheap, you can buy it in any drugstore, even supermarkets in the UK and it is full coverage. Um, you can just whack it on really really nice and thick and it really really gets a good coverage. 
Now using this pan stick I'm covering up my neck as well as any area that is not going to be highlighted with the Meron later. Now I cannot emphasize enough the powers of a beauty blender and I'm talking about a brand name beauty blender. I know a lot of different brands do their own version but you want the original beauty blender. I know it looks the same until you feel it yourself you you can't even explain the difference it's just amazing. So I'm using my beauty blender to blend in the foundation and you can see it just gets so soft it's so easy it's definitely an essential item I have in my kit. I tend to use the beauty blender fairly damp so I run it under a warm tap first and then dry it off so it's just kind of damp to the touch but not wet. Now that I have my foundation done I'm ignoring my forehead until my eyebrows are covered so I'm going to go straight in with my highlighting. I'm going back to the Mehron, um cream blend and I'm putting a line down the middle of my nose, a little dab on my chin, right in the middle of my chin and then I'm going over the um, eye bag area again but this time I'm increasing it um, to cover my entire cheekbone and I go right up just to where my ears begin and I really cover that area quite thick. And then back in with the beauty blender to blend all of that in. Um, I try to find a clean edge with that just so you don't lose the contrast of the highlight. And then it's really nice with the, the corner of the beauty blender to go right in towards the nose. You can get right into the corner there and almost use it as like an edge for the nose highlight. Now that is all of the wet makeup that I use on my face. So before I go in with the dry makeup, I'm going to set it. And I use two different setting powders, if you can call them setting powders. For all the highlighted areas, I'm going in with a big powder puff and just putting baby powder, literally just talcum powder, um, cheap as chips. And I just carefully put that on my nose, the chin and the cheekbones. Then I will use a translucent um, setting powder on the rest of my face, so that's my lower cheeks, my upper lip and the neck. And again I'm just using a translucent powder by Collection, um, it's easily accessible to me in my local drugstore but you use whatever you can find, whatever you think is better. And before we get onto the contouring I'm just using a great big fluffy brush to brush away all the excess. Now for contouring, I'm using a slightly angled fluffy brush and the first thing I normally start off with is my jawline. I just like to soften the angles on my jaw. Um, so I'm trying to round off the corners and if I, look if I look straight onto a mirror, I can see the corners and I'm just trying to round them off with this brush. The way to blend it into your chin is something that I picked up from Raja's makeup tutorial. Um, basically you want to do that kind of multi-chin look where you put your head into your neck and all of a sudden you've got like a million chins. Basically you want ev everything that goes below your first chin you want to colour in in the contour. And then when you relax that is what is going to shape your jaw and that's what looks the most natural. So you want to colour in all of those extra chins. <laughs> And I'm using a slightly bigger um, blush brush here just to, just to blend it all in. Now a lot of queens um, are a bit heavy handed with the jaw contour. You really need to go quite soft. It needs to be dark enough so you can see it and it, and it has an effect. But you really have to blend it so much because if you see harsh lines it's going to look like you have a beard and that is not what you want. For the cheekbones I am sucking in the inside of my cheeks like a fish and more or less following where my natural cheekbones are going and again I'm starting from um, more or less my sideburns and I'm curving round almost to the outside corners of my mouth but not quite. If the line followed through I'm imagining it would hit the corners of my mouth. Once I have the outline done of my cheekbones using the fluffy angled brush, I am going in with that same blush brush. It's kind of like a, a medium blush brush. Um, it's Again, it's really cheap. It came in a multi-pack from Primark, but it's just the perfect size to go in with more of that contour product um, and just to really, really carve in your cheekbones. I am not going below that line, but I'm going above and just blending it into the highlight so you get that nice gradient. I like it to be a little bit darker towards the outside of my face. Um, I just think it frames the cheekbone a bit better and ever so slightly lighter towards the inside. 
Now for the nose contour. I have contoured my nose in so many different ways over the years. Um, I'm still finding new ways to do it. I think it's probably one of the things that I find the most difficult with my face. So I'm just going to describe to you how I'm currently doing it. I've had a lot of you guys comment on my nose contour in the past, but this is, this is kind of my new trend at the moment. So again, I'm taking that fluffy angled brush and very, very gently I'm going from the outer edges of the top of my nose down towards the middle of the bottom of my nose. So almost like a V shape, a very, very soft V shape that I'm gradually going to build up. That I'm gradually going to build up until the highlight pops as a sort of triangle shape. This in theory should help to reduce the width of the end of your nose. But I have a tendency of fucking up that illusion by um, overdoing the highlight on the end of my nose um, when my makeup is finished. I, I like to just make it pop with the white eyeshadow because I like that kind of button nose look. But that quite often makes it look wider at the end. So I don't know, just just, just play around with it. Um, <laughs> have a look at photos and, and copy what other people are doing. But that is how I do mine. I always try to aim for that kind of like triangle look. And don't forget to blend the outside contour just softly into to the edge of the nose otherwise it doesn't really work from many angles it looks like you've just got these two thick bars in your nose i also like to color in um i don't know what it's called that that the bottom underneath part of your nose between your nostrils i like that to be dark um I, it just kind of like raises your nose up a little bit um yeah i just think it's cute now that my eyebrows are finally done and dry i'm going to go in basically doing the same steps that i've done with the rest of my face so first of all the pan stick i am covering the whole brow and my forehead and blending it all together with my beauty blender and then I'm going to do kind of like a mini beige rainbow, like people say. Um, mine's more of like a, a, a beige fountain, I guess. I don't know. Um, I'm using the Mehron Highlight Cream. And with my finger, I'm going from my nose highlight and branching up towards the middle of my forehead. And then I'm kind of creating like a like a fan effect, like like a, like a flower or a, a, a fountain, whatever. Um, just just the middle of my forehead, almost towards the where my eyes are, like my my iris. I'm not going further than my iris. And then again, this I'm blending with my beauty blender. All the while I'm doing my wets on my forehead, I'm being very careful about what expression I'm holding because I always get crease lines um, when I furrow my brow. Um, so until I go into my setting powder, I try to keep as blank an expression as possible. So again, I'm using the um, baby powder for the highlight and the translucent collection powder on the rest of my forehead. Now to contour my forehead, I'm getting that angled fluffy brush, um, quite a bit of product on it, and I'm going right from the corner of my eye, and I'm angling upwards, um, just above my cheekbone highlight. Um, that I want to be the darkest part of my forehead contour, and I drag that um, over my temples towards my forehead. And then really all you're doing is framing your forehead and trying to blend it into that highlight, um, making everything look as round as possible. So I'm doing like a, a rainbow motion, I'm going like, a, like an N shape, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, over and over. Um, just dragging that contour from the temples towards the middle until you end up with like a lovely, round, glowy egg forehead. And that is basically it for my highlighting and contouring. Here is my completed face. You can see that once I've done the rest of my makeup, I do go over my nose a little bit. I go over the highlighting with some white eyeshadow um, just to make that shape kind of pop and also to cover up any kind of um, fallout you get or, or fallout powder can make the contour loose definition. So I just go over that highlight just to make it pop. But otherwise, yep, that is my highlighting and contouring finished. So hopefully that was useful for some of you guys. If it was, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and comment down below. And if you'd like to see more kind of bite-sized tutorials of different parts of drag makeup, let me know what you would like to see from me next and I might just be tempted to do it. All right guys, I will speak to you soon. Bye.